Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am Amelia and this is my frugal life. I thought Christmas just being right around the corner, I would share with you 20 things we do, my husband and my three children, to make Christmas a more affordable time of the year and we'd never go into debt for Christmas. And these are some tricks that you can do to help yourself this Christmas time and many Christmases to come to prevent yourself from going into debt and also to make your new year so much smoother because you know you're not going into it with buckets fulls of debt. Debt can be crippling and if you can avoid debt at all costs, your life will generally just feel a lot calmer and more relaxed. That is what I found at least anyway. So I've got 25 tips for you here. Some of them we don't always do, most of the time these are things that we do every year without fail. Some of them are things that I've heard other people do that works for their family and I've added them in as well. Number one is make a plan. Plan everything. Plan where you're going, when you're going, how much you want to spend on each individual aspect of each part of Christmas. The more you plan, the less surprises will come up and the easier your Christ overall Christmas will be. And number two, set a budget at the beginning of the year. Of course, this year it's gonna be past that, but in the new year, look back on everything you bought, everything you spent, go through, spend a day in the in between Christmas and New Year or in the first few days of the year and see how much you've spent and how much Christmas cost you on the food, on the presents, on activities, on petrol and diesel if you went and visited family, on everything. See how much more expensive Christmas got for you. Work it out and make a budget for that following year so that you can either A, adjust the budget and make sure you spend less next year or and B, save an individual amount each month for next year. So if you found out your Christmas has cost you an overall amount of £500, then you're wanting to be spend, saving around £50 a month. And it means that when Christmas comes around and you want to buy things, you want to do things, it's not a surprise. If you want to go to the pantomime, you know you've put money aside for that when it begins. So plan everything and budget everything at the beginning of the year. And my number three, shop all year round. This can be for gifts or for decorations or anything. Shop all year, shop the New Year's sales, especially for Christmas decorations. In the New Year's sales, Boxing Day sales, all Christmas stuff goes so cheaply. So this year, if you realize that you need a fire guard, for instance, shop the sales. They will be so much more cheaper than if you buy it around Christmas time because all of the prices around Christmas are inflated. If you have children and you know come Christmas they're going to love something that you've seen on sale in the summer or you've seen um, is reduced or anything, grab it. If you've set a budget for it, you take it out of the budget and then you can buy it for that year. And it means that the months leading up to Christmas are a lot less stressful. I buy things for my children like all year round, no matter what the time of year is. If I see something that I know they'll like by that time of the year, I'm gonna get it. Number four is reuse your Christmas decorations. I've heard so many people get new decorations each year or they swap it out so they'll throw everything away, maybe keep the tree, but get rid of all of the decorations they've got, donate them, and they'll get all new ones. Like this makes me really sad because one thing I do remember growing up as a kid, our Christmases growing up were crazy. And there's a lot of things that I didn't like about our Christmases, but there was a few, quite a few things that I did love. And one thing I did love is the nostalgia of reusing all of our Christmas decorations, getting excited that we're coming, getting them down from the loft and we're gonna get to see them all and year after year, getting that excitement of seeing the same things over and over again, feeling nostalgic, feeling family, and just the excitement of Christmas. And I got that from getting new Christmas decorations. And I remember one year my family did completely gut all the old Christmas decorations and bought all new ones and I didn't know about it. And I came home, I think probably from school and my mum had put up the Christmas decorations and I was like, what is this? This isn't Christmas, where are the gingerbread men? Because we used to have a gingerbread garland that goes around the tree and it was gone. And I was like, oh. and I was older, I was a teenager by then, but I was heartbroken because to me that was Christmas. Don't feel like you have to buy all new Christmas decorations each year, reuse them. Your kids will get so excited about being able to see the same things. My number five is rather than buying all new cheap decorations every year, every couple of years, set yourself a budget and invest in lifelong decorations. We set a budget of about a hundred pounds a year on if we want to buy a new Christmas item. We invest in really good ones. So as you can see, we normally have stockings along here. 
we don't currently have them because I had a new baby this year and the person who made our personalized stockings don't make doesn't make them anymore so we had to get all new ones so we have ordered all new stockings that hopefully will be here in the next few days and with our names on that came out of our budget and we have invested and know that these will last hopefully until our kids are much much older and last year i have wanted some christmas villages for a really long time they're not actually in here because i don't want my baby to ruin them they're up on the side in the dining room uh, but I, we set ourselves a hundred pound budget to buy a new decoration and we invested in getting a really lovely Christmas village. And this is the case, it is taking us, we've been married 12 years nearly, and it's taken us 12 years to collect this, the Christmas decorations that we have. And we don't have a huge amount. We've got, every year, my mum does buy the kids normally a Christmas decoration and every year we buy a personalized Christmas decoration. Them's parents live near York and every year we go to the Christmas shop in York and get, not every year, but often we get one of the type decorations with our names on. But this is part of the budget and these are items we plan to keep forever and we budget for them. So we invest in items that we are planning to keep forever and they don't always have to be expensive. So our buy guard we actually got from a charity shop for a couple of pounds. And a lot of the things are secondhand or homemade, but it's investing on items that you know you're gonna want to keep and invest and have forever which leads me quite easily onto my number six is make your own decorations and gifts so I've got a few videos up on my channel which could help you with this and we have made our own Christmas garlands I have made our own Christmas gifts edible Christmas gift and if you want I'll link it above now with my 50 free and cheap Christmas gift ideas video. Please feel like you are able to get creative around Christmas time and make your own Christmas gifts and decoration. It's a great thing to do with the family. Every single year we make our own gingerbread houses and we can make our own uh, gingerbread men and the boys decorate them and the kids really love that. So get creative around Christmas and I am not a crafty person. Please, please don't think I'm one of these people that just knows how to glue gun and sew and all that. I don't, I do not and I was able to make my Christmas garlands. It's really easy. I've got a video linked down below, I'll put it in. Number seven and eight is buy secondhand Christmas decorations and buy secondhand Christmas gifts. Christmas decorations, every time, at every charity shop around this time of year has so many Christmas decorations that they are selling for really cheap. I went to the charity shop the other day and got a Christmas table runner for a pound and it's beautiful. And I think it is probably homemade, which I love. So you can find Christmas decorations for a fraction of the price of new ones and they're normally in really good condition because like I said in a previous point people tend to replace really regularly. I went to a charity shop sorry over the weekend I didn't get it and I'm kind of kicking myself not to but there was an outside neon Merry Christmas light for only like under £10 it was like I think £7 or something there was loads of Christmas trees in all different shapes and sizes for not much money you can find Christmas decorations for so cheap so please look second hand. And then with that, number eight is buy secondhand gifts. And oh my goodness, on my what I got my kids for Christmas this year video, I have not received so much hate for a video ever, which gave me a good chuckle because we only really buy secondhand Christmas gifts for most people because we have many reasons and I'm probably gonna do a separate video on why, but it's more sustainable, it's more ethical, and it's better for our, my, our pockets and saving money. And there are so many reasons why we buy secondhand gifts. I personally do not see secondhand gifts as second to new gifts. I see them very equal, and I actually see secondhand better because you're not paying towards things being made and not paying towards slaves making your products, and your money is a vote. And I'm not voting for the corruption of materialism. And that is a big reason why we buy secondhand gifts, but people were distraught at the fact that I only give my kids secondhand and we didn't even reach the budget and I'm a terrible mother for not buying more gifts for my children. So, you know, if you did watch that video and you were offended, we didn't reach that budget, no, but my kids do get that budget, the whole budget. So whether it is we put the rest of the money into their savings account or we go and do a Christmas activity like this year, just after Christmas, we are actually going to the Harry Potter studios and the rest of the budget went on that. So it's not necessarily a Christmas gift, but it is a activity we are doing for the kids with that budget. So yeah, just so you know, I was people were very offended that I only spent this much money, which makes me chuckle because last year I spent a lot less on my children. <laughs> 
and people didn't get grumpy at all but hey please feel free to buy secondhand gifts i don't understand the stigma around it number nine is do secret santa with your friends and family me and my husband have been married like i said for 12 years and his side of the family we have always done secret santa every year i i organize it they are all up for it we set a 20 pound budget so it is not much and we use elfster which is an online name generator and it sends emails to everyone and we do secret santa gifts and it is just so much easier so much more fun not including the kids there's eight of us do this and i'm not buying eight gifts i'm buying one gift and my husband is buying the uh, another gift it's just so much more easier so much more manageable and a big thing for me around christmas isn't necessarily the budget that i struggle with it's the like heaviness of oh i need to buy them a gift i need to buy them a gift i need to buy them a gift and i'm trying to remember everyone if you can do secret santa then you are eliminating eliminating a lot of that like mental load of having to buy people gifts my number 10 we've still got 15 more to go but my number 10 is focusing on experiences and time together rather than consumerism i saw in my what i got my kids for christmas video that people were so offended with the fact i wasn't getting my kids stuff and they said they're gonna have a horrible christmas that is not our christmases maybe i'll see if i can film a bit of it without my kids faces in just for you to see how excited and how much they love and appreciate Christmas and also they're gonna get gifts from so many other people that we're not gonna buy many gifts we are going to focus on the experiences of Christmas the making our gingerbread houses together as a family watching Christmas movies going out and seeing friends and family and we're not gonna focus on the consumerism because Christmas is really about spending time together and my husband gets a couple of weeks off work and we get to just enjoy the season. So please stop putting so much pressure on yourselves to consume things, but also just try and slow down, take a breath and enjoy the time you have because it is fleeting. We hear it all the time, but I have a nine year old now and I look back and I go, how is he already nine? And number 11 kind of goes hand in hand with that. It's lower your expectations. I feel like a lot of people at Christmas go, it's gonna be amazing. I'm gonna get all of this for Christmas. I'm gonna get that and this, and I wanna do this. I want, and they just kind of get so excited, which is good, but so excited and so, they expect so much that it's only ever going to not reach your expectations or you're not gonna get that one gift that you really wanted or you're not gonna, I don't know, um, there's, it's never going to reach your expectations if you're just expecting everything. Lower your expectations and try and be in the moment enjoying time with friends and family. Number 12 is be able, be prepared, be okay with saying no. And what I mean by that is, hey, your friends contact you. Hey, do you want to take the kids to the pantomime tonight? It's going to be £100 for all of us. Hey, that's really not in the budget. I can't come tonight, but have a great time. I will try and save up and make sure I can go next year. Hey, did you want to, what do people do around Christmas? Did you want to come out for a meal with us? At this place, it's gonna be this much money, whatever. No, we're okay, it's not in the budget right now. We can't go to that. Would you prefer to come around and we can hang out together at my house and I'll get some snacks in? Mum, for Christmas, I really want these 500 pound trainers. No. <laughs> I am maybe not the nicest parent in that aspect. If my kids want something expensive, it's not so much now because they are so young, <clears throat> but A, that I've said you can ask other people and everyone for money for Christmas and your birthday and you can save up for it. You can do work and jobs around the house to save up for it. But I want them to appreciate the kind of how much things actually cost. Like why his son at the moment is really wanting a pet tarantula. And I've said to him, I won't stop you from getting a tarantula, but I am not going to buy you that. It's going to be like for the whole setup, like 250 pounds. If you really want it, you can save your money for it and work towards it yourself because then I know that you really do want it. I'm okay with saying no to that. Whatever the no is in your life, but be okay with around Christmas time saying no. Number 13 is know your prices going in. Around Christmas time, prices are extremely elevated. They go extremely high just because it is Christmas. I had some friends around yesterday. They were telling us what they do around Christmas and I was like, this is genius. They actually do their Christmas meal on Christmas Eve, they go to a carvery because the price of a carvery on Christmas Eve is the same price as it is all year round. Whereas on Christmas day, it goes up to like 60 pounds a head. So they, on Christmas Eve, they celebrate Christmas, they have their carvery, they do all the Christmas things. And then on Christmas day, they go on a 
adventure, a walk on, in places that are really quiet because everyone's inside celebrating Christmas. Know your prices going in and go, is this, an, is this this price just because it's close to Christmas? And then if it is, either A, don't buy it, or B, next year plan to buy it or the similar item at a different time of year. Number 14 is don't match other people's spending and get like spending guilt. So if someone's brought you a really nice item and it was a hundred pounds you do not need to match that hundred pounds spent if they want to buy that for you it's in their budget and they saw something they re you really liked for that much money that's great for them and i am 99 percent sure that most people would not expect you to match that spending and if they do then that's their problem if you think of a gift that is really thoughtful that you know they will love and it's only 20 pounds then that is not only it's still quite a bit funny but that is amazing don't feel guilty for the fact that you haven't matched their spending because everyone is in such different stages of life that they might be in a place where they can spend a hundred pounds. If you're not in that place or you don't want to spend that much money and adding, and you've got more people to buy for, then you're okay with not having to match that. Please don't feel guilty for not matching people's spending. Number 15 is ask friends and family and people that you're planning on buying gifts for for lists. Rather than aimlessly going to the shops and buy, trying to buy anything that you think they'll like or another Christmas bath set. I'm sorry, maybe I'm the only person in the world, but I can't stand bath sets. Everyone always seems to buy me these bath sets and I'm just like, A, they're probably like, I just don't, I just don't like them. I don't see the point in them. I think they are a waste of money and I don't really use them because I try to avoid fragranced items. So don't buy Pete things just for the sake of buying items. There is nothing wrong with messaging some people saying, hey, have you got any Christmas like, uh, Christmas things that you, anything you want for Christmas? And most people will probably appreciate that more because then they get something that they know that they like and that you're not wasting your money on some tap that they're just gonna donate, give to someone else or throw in the bin. Number 16 is don't buy into trends. Whether that is gifts for people, uh, Christmas decoration trends of the year, whatever the trend is, don't buy into it. You don't have to follow the trends. The reason they are trends is to, for people higher up to make money. They advertise, they market for you to want this and that and everything that they are marketing is just so that they can make money. The trend will never last, the items will never last. I remember seeing a video recently of someone going into charity shop saying that item that you saw on TikTok, whatever it is, don't buy it because it just ends up in the charity shop. Number 17 might be a bit of a, uh, people might not like this but don't buy Christmas themed clothes and if you do buy Christmas Christmas themed clothes buy them secondhand you will notice that I have my Christmas top I've had this for like five years perhaps and I bought this secondhand for a couple of pounds if you go into any charity shop at the moment there is rails and rails and rails of Christmas themed items for so like a uh, tiny fraction of the price so please don't buy new you are saving yourself some money you're only going to wear it at one time of the year buy second hand you're helping support a charity you're saving yourself money and you're helping the environment by buying second hand hi baby i've got halfway through my video and now i've got my baby let's see if i can get through the other half about you getting in the way number 18 is focus on the meaning of christmas whether you are a religious person or not remember why you are celebrating christmas it isn't for things, it isn't for items, it's to celebrate the birth of Christ. Remember why you're celebrating Christmas and that it's not a time just for consumerism. That is why so many companies allow people to be off this time of year, to spend time together as families. Number 19, if you're wanting to spend time with friends and family but you don't have the funds to go out and do things, organize, bring and share nights, have people come around to your house, ask them to bring specific items and you can all share the load of how much it's gonna cost but you can still spend time together. My 20th, Point is limit the physical amount of gifts that you have under the tree. Before Christmas actually kind of gets underway, my husband and I will have a discussion of how many gifts are acceptable to have under the tree, how many are we gonna get for each other, and then even, it just makes you have to think more about the gifts you're getting, and you're not just gonna get tapped to fill up a tree. So. Let's say we have planned to just get no more than three gifts wrapped up under the tree for each of us. And we have to, you're gonna make it very hard for them to hear. 
let's see if it's if you can hear this or not i'm very sorry i might have to voice out this let's see you have to think more about the gifts that you are getting people and try and make them more personalized and more thoughtful and you're not going to spend as much money just filling the tree up with tat my number 21 is get creative with regifting and this can mean regifting items that you have if you know someone would like it i am okay with regifting the way i mean this is specifically my husband and I, for Christmas this year, we have a, as you can hear, a very nearly one-year-old. He'll be one a week after Christmas. He doesn't really know what's going on. He is happy with just boxes, as you can tell, that's what he's currently playing with. He doesn't need anything because he's got all of the hand-me-downs from his brothers. So what we have actually done for Christmas this year, we've got him a couple of little bits of chocolate. And then up in the loft, we have a huge box of Duplo Lego. It was my other two boys when they were younger. And it's been in the loft for a few years now and he's getting to an age where he would love that. So we are not spending really any money on him this year and we're just going to wrap up the Duplo, yes! And you're very excited, I know. You don't understand, but you're happy. And I just saved myself a ton of money. Yeah, I got I got cancelled for doing that on my what I got my kids for Christmas. People told, said I was a terrible parent, but if he was older, of course it would be different, but he's only not even one. He doesn't understand what's going on and he'll be so pumped about getting that. I've seen people with their babies actually wrap up Christmas utensils for Christmas because they just like the idea of unwrapping the present and they just play with the, the paper and then they play with the utensils. It's like they are babies. If you've seen so many videos where you give your baby the option of two items, they're going to pick the item that isn't the toy nearly every time. So why waste your money? Go re-gift items, especially if you do have small babies. It's just so much easier. And often, if you do have small babies, but it's your first, ask your friends and family that have had babies already and say, hey, have you got anything you're getting rid of that is baby friendly? They'll probably just give you stuff because people just want to give away their baby items because there's so much out there. Number 22 is try to have a more frugal approach to your food shopping and grocery bills in November. So then you can carry that budget through to December. I've just uploaded my what, like my grocery haul video. So if you want to see that, go ahead. But we, our budget is £500 a month for a family of five. And this year we spent just over £400. So I've got £120 that I'm able to carry out into the year, into the December month. So I've got now a £620 budget for December rather than £500 food budget. So carry, try and spend less in November so you can carry it through to December. Number 23 is one of my favourites, but one of the most basics is go on Christmas walks. If you are people that often spend a lot of money doing Christmas activities, Trust me, just go on Christmas walks, whether that's in the evening, in the afternoon, evening when it's gotten dark and you find a really Christmassy area of town. Often if you have local Facebook pages, they will tell you where crazy Christmas decorations are. Getting outside is really good for our mental health. It might be cold, just wrap up and the kids will love it, looking at all the Christmas decorations and they get so excited and it's a free activity or very close to free activity that everyone can enjoy. Oh, my 24, which is gonna be controversial. I'm sure people aren't gonna enjoy this, but please drink less alcohol. So we as a family don't really drink alcohol in Christmas. We'll buy a few bits for when we're hosting, but we will buy a bottle of Asti for cooking and putting in gravy. If you've never put Asti in gravy, just trust me, it makes all the difference, trust me. But we aren't drinkers, one of two reasons, because A, it will save us a ton of money, one of three reasons actually, it saves us a ton of money. We don't really enjoy alcohol, but also it means that in the new year, we're not having to get out of that slug of eating, fizz drinking fizzy drinks and alcohol. It's not like we're having to purge all of that. And my husband, when we went on holiday recently, was drinking a lot of fizzy drinks. And when he came back, he just had like a letdown. He was almost like uh, feeling ill and had a headache. It's the same with alcohol. Yes, mama, mama's here. You playing with the ball ball? And I'm not saying don't drink alcohol but I'm trying to say limit your alcohol no. consumption. Don't make Christmas so alcohol centered, please. It will really help you in so many ways, but mostly it will really help financially. It's gonna get really loud now because he's found the magnetite. My number 25, my last tip that I have for you is stay away from Christmas themed items, Christmas themed flavors, Christmas themed things that are just there to inflate the price of items. So. Around this time of year, you go into any grocery shop and there are so many amazing different Christmas foods and all specific Christmas items like chilli and nutmeg jam. However, you can just buy some not themed chilli jam and add nutmeg to it. Don't buy into 
just the Christmas themed items. If you want some and you really like them and you've got the money in your budget, of course go buy them. I'm not saying being a spruce, have fun. This is when it goes back to my know your prices because I have seen that they have created items that they have all year round. They've just put it in Christmas wrapping and jacked up the price. So please don't buy into the Christmas themed flavors and items just because it's in the Christmas section. Go and look at how much it is throughout the year and compare and contrast and then often, oh, do you not want that? I saw there was a caramelized onion chutney, which throughout the year is £1.40. They still sell it in the shop at that price, but they had a, oh, what was it? A roasted caramelized onion chutney. They literally changed one word and it was like 3 dollars And it was the same jar, same size, and a bit of Christmas decoration. So please look out for how they are overcharging you just for the Christmas themed items. They are my 25 things that I try to do to make a Christmas more affordable a bit easier on my pocket and honestly more enjoyable let me know down below if there's anything i forgot and that you do i would love to hear it and i'm sure everyone else would like to know and let me know if you do any of these or if you're going to start doing any of these and uh, if they help you at all i would love to hear it but i need to now get this one most likely down for a nap and i will see you in my next video guys i hope you enjoyed this one. i hope you enjoyed this and i hope you have a really merry christmas bye friends for now